Hello friends and welcome back to my crafty space. My name is Crystal and in today's video we are going to be working on the first four layouts inside of my October Daily 2021 album. I am so excited to share these pages with you and to give you a little bit of a peek inside of my album so far this year. In case you don't already know this, I am actually completing my October Daily album through daily live videos over on my Patreon. So the video footage that you are going to see today is a compilation of, I believe, three different days that I worked on this live with my patrons. So I just took that same footage from the live video edited it, and then now I'm voicing it over. So you're watching a shortened version where I will give you the cliff notes basically on how I put these pages together. So let's start with the title page and my reason why page. Originally, I was thinking I was going to combine the two to create a title page that also housed my reason why. I like to start my albums with a reason why type of journaling just to help me stay very grounded in the reason for or my purpose behind doing these types of projects and to give myself the reminder that, you know, this album isn't just about putting together really awesome spreads and sharing it and getting the likes and getting the views that there's really a much deeper reason for why I do this album. For me this year, my reason why is to take moments or to intentionally spend some time with my family and enjoy my favorite season of the year, which is the fall. We just recently moved into a new home and with, <laughs> with a move comes a lot of chaos and a lot of busyness and that's pretty much been our life for the last month and it's most likely going to be our life for the next couple of months ahead. So it felt kind of, I don't know, a little bit overwhelming to get started with this project this year and I almost didn't do it. I considered skipping October Daily this year and then I remembered, you know, that this is a project that doesn't have to be overly complicated. It doesn't have to be you know, all out and super grand. And ultimately, the reason why I love this project so much is because it reminds me or it encourages me to stop, to pause the busyness of the normal day and to spend time with my family and to spend time doing the things that I love this time of year. So I wanted to make sure to document that reason why for my album this year. And I actually had two different ideas that came to mind for how I could do this. The first that you see is over on the left-hand side. I have a Vicki Booten paper, that, which I believe is called Floral Study. On the opposite side, there is a plethora of really bright, colorful flowers. But on the B side of the paper, there is this orange with a black and white stripe kind of mixed media looking paper. And I thought that it was perfect for an October daily spread. So I pulled that one out along with the acrylic piece that says Wicked Awesome. That acrylic piece came from Colorcast Designs in addition to the wood veneer October that you see underneath that as a subtitle and the glitter black acrylic bat. So all of those pieces were from Colorcast Designs and I loved that I could start my album with the title Wicked Awesome as though the entire month ahead is and will be Wicked Awesome. So I thought that would be a great idea for a title page. And then I thought maybe I could cut a slit in the page itself and slip a tag down in there with my reason why journaling on the tag itself. I ultimately decide not to do that as you will see here and to do something else instead. My second idea was to use the crow paper that you see there with the creepy trees. That came from a Coco Daisy Halloween kit that was released this year. And on top of that, I put a tag with a little pocket that was from the Heidi Swap collection and then a couple of pumpkins and ephemera pieces to um, finish that page off. And for that one, I figured what I could do is 
put my journaling on the back of the tag for my reason why and then have that be you know part of the title for that page as well. I debated between the two pages for a little bit and posed it to my patrons. <laughs> what should I do? Which one should I pick? And they told me to just do them both. So ultimately, that's what I decided to do. I didn't really want to have to choose because I loved them both. So we're going to go ahead and put both of these together. I did consider using one of the uh, plastic adhesive strips that you can put on the side of the page in order to add it into the album without having to hole punch the paper. But then I decided to just go ahead and cut my paper to the full size of the page protector, which is five inches wide by eight and a quarter inches tall. Since this is going to be my title page, I wanted the, um, what do I want to say like this? I want to call it the spine, but that's not really the right word, but basically the edge, <laughs> the edge of the page that has the hole punches in it. I wanted that to be not see-through so that my whole title page seemed as though it was one big piece. So that's what we're going to do. I did go ahead and use my hole punch there to add my six hole punches. I get my hole punch from Amazon and I will link that in the description box for you down below in case you're looking for a punch that will work in these six ring binders. It works for the Life Crafted album, which is the album I am working in for October Daily. It also works for the Ali Edwards and Studio Calico albums as well. So next we're going to go ahead and add the acrylic piece onto the page. For me, I'm just going to use some 1 8 inch score tape. I have never had issues with score tape not holding my acrylic pieces down onto the paper. If for some reason, someday down the line in the future, these start falling off, I can either add more adhesive and stick them back on, or I could always swap it out for red line tape, which is a bit stronger than score tape. But for the most part, score tape does its job really, really well. It's becoming more and more so my go-to adhesive when it comes to scrapbooking. So I think that it works great. The wood veneer piece already has adhesive on the back. It comes pre uh, pre-stickied. <laughs> I don't know what I, what I want to call that, but it has adhesive on the back. So you just take the little backing off and I can stick that down. And the bat, I'm also using the score tape. Once I get all of these pieces on here, I'm then going to add my year 2021 underneath the acrylic or the wood veneer piece there. And the alphabet stickers I'm using or number stickers are from an older Kelly Perky kit. I actually think they may have come from the mini Halloween kit that she did in 2020. I just haven't had a chance to use very many of them. So we're going to do that here. Now, there are not any zeros in this alphabet set. So I did have to use the letter O. Um which is slightly smaller than the rest of the numbers. And that, that does kind of irk me a little bit, but I figure that this is a Halloween album. And one of the things about the Halloween decorations and vibe is that it is a little bit wonky, uh, a little bit weird, that sort of stuff. So having one of those letters be slightly shorter than the other doesn't really make all that big of a difference, especially in an album like this. So now we're going to move on and work on the reason why page. So this one I needed to trim down just a little bit to that same outside of the page protector size. This is going to be adhered back to back with my title page. So I needed the size of that page to match my cover. So we'll get that hole punched. And then I'm going to realize a slight flaw in my design here. And that is that uh, the pocket there, the October little pocket with the tag that comes out of it, the tag is removed to the right side. So I can't necessarily turn the tag upside down or the pocket upside down because then the word October or OCT would be upside down and that wouldn't make sense. So because it's oriented in this way, when I put it into my album, I have to be very mindful of the rings. So originally I was going to put the tag and the pocket there at the bottom of the page because I felt like that to me felt, it just felt right, you know, in terms of scale and placement. 
But that wasn't going to work when I needed to remove the tag from the pocket. So then I moved it up to the middle of the page and decided that that was going to be good enough. Again, I posed that to my patrons and, and gave them the opportunity to have some feedback for me because my inclination was um, that I really felt like it, it belonged at the bottom of the page. But now that I have actually completed this page and things are filled in and, you know, I, I've seen it now that it is completed. It actually, I really, really like it with everything in the middle. So I was, I'm so glad to have had some positive feedback with that as I was putting this page together. So I'm going to add my double-sided adhesive to the back of the pocket, um, but I'm not going to stick it down yet because I want to make sure to put the pumpkins on there first. I love these little pumpkin die cut pieces. These came from the Fancy Pants A Little Scary collection, which uh, I am super loving this year. I like the colors that are in it. It has a little bit of that pink color that I was envious of the uh, 31 collection from Prima that everyone else is getting this year. I was feeling a little bit down by the fact that I didn't have a ton of pink in my collection this year. And then when I pulled everything back out, I started to realize that actually there is quite a bit of pink in this too. And I like the little bit of femininity that it adds to the page. So I went ahead and adhered my two pumpkins together put those down on the page, and then I could go ahead and add the pocket on top of that. So we've got this little cluster there in the middle. Then underneath the tag, I'm going to add one of these uh, phrase die cut pieces, again, from the same collection, Fancy Pants, A Little Scary. And this one says, this is Halloween, and it's black with white writing. I have another one of these acrylic black bats. These ones, the other two that came in the in this set do not have the glitter on them they're just plain black and they're a little bit smaller so i'm going to add one into the upper right hand corner of this page above the pumpkins which i like because it gives this page another texture and a little bit more dimension which we're already getting some from the tag and the little pocket that it goes in and then we're also going to get some more with this twine so i have this a uh, roll of black and white twine that I purchased years and years ago from Target it has lasted me a very long time, which is surprising because I use it all the time, especially in this album and in my December daily album. I went ahead, added the twine on there, and then later I'm going to go back and actually add my journaling to that tag. At this point in time, when I was creating these pages, my computer was not yet set up in my studio. I had just unpacked everything and set up my craft table so I could go live the next day uh, on the 30th of September. So it was a little bit of a scramble to get ready to go live the very next day. Um, and what happened is I ended up, my husband was out of town and we just didn't have an opportunity to get my computer going. So for the first day here, I did everything without pictures and without journaling. I did want to add my journaling to that tag through my computer and typed text because um, I knew I wanted to write a little bit more. And in order to fit that on the tag, it was going to be easier to do so with typed out text versus my handwriting, which I, I seem, I, I feel like my handwriting, I am unable to have it look really uniform. Like I try to start writing and I always write too big at the beginning and then I figure out my groove and by then everything looks kind of wonky, <laughs> which is fine. And I'm, you know, learning to love that about my handwriting. But for something like this, I want it to be typed out. So that I'm going to go ahead and add later. When I completed that reason why page, I did go ahead and adhere that back to back with the title page. And then looking at the title page again, it just felt a little bit stark. Uh, I wanted something more on it. And so I went into some of my different embellishments here. I have that one last acrylic black bat. And then I thought, why not add a flurry of bats flying up? the like 
from, from one corner to the other diagonally over my page. You know how a lot of people decorate their mantles or their stairway with bats in that way where there's just like a whole bunch of them flying up into the sky and they get smaller as they get further away. I thought that this could be a really great way to utilize more of this space on my page and to also use up a lot more of these little bat pieces. So I've pulled a couple of different ones out here. I have some puffy sticker tiny bats. Those came from the Heidi Swap Halloween set this year. Then we've got the acrylic bat from, or acrylic black bat from Colorcast Designs. And then I'm also going to go through my ephemera and find one more that I'm going to fussy cut out from an older piece that was included in the Halloween market from uh, Cardabella's collection in 2020. So that's going to become my uh, my stacked bats here. As I was putting this page together, we talked about you know how different different groupings of animals are called different things, and I couldn't come up with the term that you call a group of bats. And uh, when we Googled it and figured out that a group of bats is actually called a cauldron, I was, I just, I loved it. And it just felt really perfect considering my title was Wicked Awesome, which feels like Wicked Witch and witchy makes you think of cauldron and cauldron is bats. And it just, it all just seemed to make sense. So here is how that's turning out. I'll, I will mention that there's one other bat on there that came from the, uh, Coco Daisy collection. It's the one that's a little bit bigger with the white outline. So here are the first two pages. Now uh, we're going to we're going to move into story number one. For story number one, I still did not have my computer set up with my printer, so I was unable to print the photos that I wanted to go with this page. So what we're going to do instead is just create the journaling page and then uh, when I go to the next story, I will then go back and add in my photos and embellish those and do all of that fun stuff. So for this page, I am using a 12 by 12 pattern paper from the Fancy Pants A Little Scary collection. This one has a subtle pink background with these like creepy, to me they almost look like pirate pumpkins and black owls on top. And then there are some black stars throughout the page as well. I cut that down to the outside of the page protector size. So five inches by eight and a quarter inches. And my plan is to add a title up at the top of the page with some uh, layered up papers and either puffy stickers or cardstock stickers or something of that nature. And then underneath that, I want to hand write my journaling using a brush pen on top of vellum, which will then layer on top of the pattern paper. When I'm working with a pattern paper that's really busy, which this one feels kind of busy because of all of those little icons and things all over the page. And, and the fact that they're smaller also lends itself to the page feeling busier. When I'm dealing with a paper like that, and I want to use it as a background, what I will do is add vellum on top because it helps to mute it down. And then you can also see the text or whatever is printed on top of the vellum. So it works really nicely for allowing you to use busier papers for your spreads without detracting or distracting from your actual story or photos that you're adding to the page. So that's what we're going to do here. Now, the other thing that I wanted to do with the vellum on top of the pattern paper is to stitch it all down. And I actually want to create some spaces using stitching where my journaling will be added. So I will stitch the perimeter around the vellum and then I will stitch another four lines across the middle to create five sections for journaling. Then I'm going to use one of the embellishments there to the left, one of the sticker groupings as bullet points. So I've pulled out a couple different options. I've got these little tiny black cat 
heads. And then I've got the chipboard uh, asterisks, which came from the Storytelling Basics collection from Allie Edwards. And there are two different sizes, so I could use the larger size or the smaller size. And a lot of the colors inside of that grouping go very nicely with the colors in this particular layout. So I have trimmed down my vellum, which I did trim uh, a bit shorter than wide. So I believe I left about a half an inch on the left side, the bottom, and the right side. And then the top of it is going to be covered by my pattern paper, which I'm going to use to create my title space. So once I kind of figured out what my dimensions were going to be, I went ahead and made little tiny marks for each of the four lines that are going to go across the middle. And that will help me to make sure I'm stitching those uh, an equal distance apart or as equal distance as I can, since I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to trace a line, I'm going to sort of wing it and just hope for the best. But at least I have started myself out <laughs> hopefully winning this one. So I grabbed my sewing machine out. I'm using black thread on the top and white thread on the bottom. A lot of times I just change out the top color thread because that's the only one you're going to see. And if you do happen to see a little bit of the white thread, if my tension is off or anything like that, it's going to just add to the whimsy of the page. I'm not too worried about white showing through. So uh, that's why you see the black on the top, the white on the bottom. And then um, if I were to do something that's, you're going to see both sides of it, which I will end up doing something like that in a couple days here. So the next video, I believe you're going to see, you're going to see something that I will be stitching where it actually does matter that I have black on both sides. But for the most part, I don't mind having black and then white. The other thing that I did is I went ahead and made my title piece there. So my title is Bucket List. That is my story number one, is my Halloween bucket list for this year. And I added the cardstock, no, chipboard, not cardstock. They are chipboard alphabet stickers from last year's December daily release from Allie Edwards. I added those up at the top and then went ahead and stitched those down directly through the middle of all of those letters. Then I'm using some of the Tim Holtz typewriter tape, which has a Halloween theme. So it's got some Halloween words across there and it, it does have a raised text, which feels really, really cool. And then the tape itself is almost plasticky. So a really interesting texture to have on the page. So I put that right at the bottom of my title to help create a point of separation between the title space and the journaling space. Then I also pulled out the little bat kid or the kid dressed up like a bat. Um, that is a really, really old piece of ephemera that I've had for years. I believe it came from a doodle bug maybe, or it was from, gosh, I don't even really know what collection that came from. I do know that it was probably three or four years ago that I purchased it, but he's so cute or she, who knows? Can't really tell. Um, such a cute little little child to put on the spread and it blended so nicely with having all of the owls in the background like something about that seemed to go together really nicely i ultimately chose to go with the black cat puffy stickers as my bullet points and then i'm going to use my brush pen to add my journaling this brush pen is one that ali edwards recommended i will add a link to it in the description box for you it does go on the page wet. So once I have my journaling on here, I will set this to the side for a couple of minutes to let it dry on top of the vellum. But once it's dry, it's good to go. So it allowed me to add my journaling for this spread again, without having the ability to print my journaling from my computer. I think if I had my computer available at the time, I probably would have gone ahead and typed up my journaling. And I'm actually kind of glad that it wasn't prepared because I like the whimsical feeling of the handwritten brush lettered journaling, which I use brush lettered in massive quotation marks because I don't really know how to brush letter. I just kind of write the best I can <laughs> with the brush pen. So 
That completes my journaling page for story number one. And you could also see as I was writing there some of the bullet or some of my um some of my bucket list items, which I believe were go to a pumpkin patch, make Halloween cookies, uh, go to our Zubu here. Um, and I don't remember what else I said because now it's gone, but you'll see it again. And I will also have some close up pictures at the end of this video. So you'll be able to get some close ups of those. So now that we are done with that one, we are moving on to the final day of footage, uh, the final live, what do I want to say, live video footage that I'm editing for you for this time. So this is going to be a portion of my intro that I decided I wanted to do on the inside cover of my album. So most years when I have done this project and most years when I have done December Daily, I like to add some kind of pocket or structure on the inside cover of my album that allows me to store tags or some kind of journaling in there um, where I can give an overview of the different people in our family in regards to the holiday season. So that's what this is going to be. I'm taking a treat bag that I purchased from Target and I am deconstructing it and then reconstructing it into a pocket that will hold tags, one for each of our family members. One of the things that I loved about this treat bag in particular is that it has this little window in it in the shape of a pumpkin. I thought one of the things I could do with this particular pocket is to eventually print a photo of our family, whether that is in our Halloween costumes or just one that we take at some point throughout this month, and to put it into this pocket where you'll then be able to see it through the pumpkin window. I thought that would be a really cute idea. So what I'm going to do today is create the pocket and then I'm going to also create the tags where they are prepped and ready for journaling and then um, I can slip those into the pocket for now until we're ready to fill them out. For the outside of this, I added a little bit of decoration to it. I took some of the Tim Holtz Halloween washi tape that has a pinked edging on it, and it looks almost like some, some form of metal. So I strung that across the bottom of the pocket there, doing one where the pinked edging is at the top, and then another strip where the pinked edging is at the bottom. And then in the middle of that, I put this chipboard piece from Tim Holtz that says collector of curiosities. I thought that was a really cute sentiment for that pocket. Underneath that, I have another little piece that says it's just a bunch of hocus pocus. And then I added this Halloween banner up at the top. Now the bag originally had a pinked edging on the top of it, but it was intended to fold down to close the bag once you had treats inside of the bag. I wanted to maintain that little edging at the top, so I ended up cutting off the top of the pocket and then re-adhering it on the back side so that you still get that edge at the top and it still has a little bit of decoration up there. I really like the way that that turned out. Once I had everything assembled, I added some score tape to the back of it and then stuck that down directly on the inside of my cover of my Life Crafted album. Next, what I needed to do was to create some tags that are going to go inside of this little pocket. I have these two craft tags that are left over from last year's December Daily release from Allie Edwards. That was the one in 2020. I did consider using the craft tags for this project, but then ultimately decided that I could use two papers from Heidi Swap that are the exact same pattern, this Halloween kind of mixed media polka dot looking paper, and cut that down into four separate tags that could then be used for each of our family members. I pulled out this alphabet sticker set that I have been carrying around for, again, just a number of years. I have a pile of Halloween product that I just like to keep together. At the end of the year, I'll put everything back in the Halloween box and then I pull it out the next year. 
These alphabet stickers have been part of that Halloween box for years and years, and I am finally opening them up for the first time and using them. I purchased these in the Target dollar aisle way back when. The numbers themselves or the letters themselves are really big. I want to say they're three inches tall. And what I'm going to do is add one for each of our family members for the first letter of their first name on top of the tag, leaving some space at the bottom in case I want to add a photo of that family member at some point there at the bottom. So we'll see if I end up doing that. Once I get the journaling on there, which I still don't even have at this point, I'm going to use some of the, uh, it's like a, what do I want to call that? Mummy a mummy like ribbon or trim, mummy trim. <laughs> so it basically looks like the um, strips of fabric that you would put, that you would mummify somebody with. I'm going to use that as my ribbon that I will attach to the top of the tags in order to be able to pull them out of the pocket. So that is going to complete the front inside cover for the time being. And now we're going to move on to story number two for this day. For story number two, I am going to be telling the story of my favorite Halloween costumes or the prompt was costume, but I couldn't pick one. So I've got costumes. So I went back into my photo archives to pull out some photos of my favorite costumes that we've worn, um, me personally, and then also our family and, uh, put together some journaling on that, that will fit inside of a tag. I believe the tag is sized at four inches tall by maybe two, 0.75 inches wide. I'm not 100% sure on that sizing, but it's something around that. It actually might even be more than four inches. It could be six, six inches by 2.75 or by three. Anyway, it's something in that ballpark. I have a tag that I've just had sitting around. It's my template a lot of times for, or my pattern for making tags. So I did take my journaling and cut that into the three separate tags, set that to the side, and we'll come back to that in a second because I actually want to backtrack and go back to my reason why page to add my photo that I have finally been able to print to my page. So at this point on this day, which would have been October... Third, I finally had my printer hooked up and my computer working and everything going so I could finally print some pictures. The picture that I chose for my reason why page is one that my kids and I took together on October 1st. When the season changes to October, our family likes to celebrate the start of this month by dressing up in full Halloween apparel and living our very best spooky life for the day. And really, really, we dress up in Halloween attire almost every day in October. It's just, we love it. We love it. We love it. So uh, Izzy wore her newest Halloween outfit to school that day. Jonah dressed up in his Halloween outfit. I dressed up in mine, which was just a, it was a spider web sweatshirt that I purchased from Target this year. And then this kind of modern type of knit witch's hat, which I had ordered from a company called Etherly Wicked, but I did also see it on Amazon as well. So I'll make sure to link that in case you guys are looking for a really fun, modern witch's hat. So we donned our outfits and went onto the front porch and took a bunch of pictures together. My husband was actually out of town at this point in time, so he probably would have joined us for these pictures. He just wasn't here when we were taking them, and we wanted to commemorate that we celebrated October 1st in the beginning of the month of Halloween. So I've got a picture that's going to go from the same photo shoot next to my bucket list. This is one where we're making witch like evil faces. And I thought that it was a really cute photo. For this one, I added a couple of ephemera pieces on there. I have a chipboard piece that says resting witch face, which I thought was just kind of punny for that particular photo. I added the number one to signify that this is story number one. 
and then um, put a couple of enamel dots on there as well and called that one good. So now that we've got the photos all set in my first couple of layouts there, we're going to return again to story number two. So story number two, the foundation of this page is going to be a pocket that's going to hold those three different tags documenting my three different Halloween favorite or favorite Halloween costumes. So I took this paper from the Fancy Pants A Little Scary Collection. I don't remember what this paper is called, but it has a white background with black stars and I super, super love it. The opposite side of it has calendars, like October calendars, which I don't see myself using, but I will use every single inch of the black stars. I, I love it so much. Then on top of that, I have this piece of transparency acetate that's got a spider like, oh gosh, like a dotted line, but it's made from spiders. And then it's got um, a pumpkin or a couple pumpkins there in the bottom corner. So that piece of plastic it, interestingly enough, came from the packaging of some window stickers. So, you know how there are window stickers that you can get? Some of them are the plastic ones that you can press onto your window, but then there are also the kind that are like sticky, like, um, I don't know, like gooey. And those you can stick on your window as well for window stickers. A lot of times those ones are really fun for kids to use. Well, we have a friend, uh, our our kids, our, we call them Uncle Phil and Aunt Sue, our family essentially, that gave our kids these gooey window stickers for the house when we moved into the new house. And those stickers were housed on this transparency packaging that had decorations all around it. So the kids used the window stickers and I confiscated the plastic piece to use for October daily because why not? It's actually really cool. So I cut it in half and this is going to let me use the half with the pumpkins on it for my pocket. And then there's another half that has the corners covered in spider webs that I figured I might be able to use at a future point in time, maybe to do something similar to this, or I'll see if maybe there's a different use that I will come up for with that later. So I have that cut in half. My plan is to stitch that on top of the, pa the pattern paper with the stars, but I do want to add a title on top of the plastic as well, and I will stitch that down as well. So there's going to be a few things that I'm going to work on putting together here before pulling out my sewing machine so I can get all of the sewing done all at once. So the next thing I'm moving on to here is putting together the back side of the tags, which are going to have the photos, the words, and then a little bit of decoration. For this, I came up with a formula that I used where I've got the journaling at the bottom, a photo at the top, which depicts the costume that is my favorite, a little piece of black and white washi stripe that goes on the left side of the photo, and then a tiny phrase sticker that is black with white text at the top of the photo. So that is what I used for all three of my tags. And then on the front side of these are going to be the pattern papers that you can see here. I wanted to add a little bit more texture to this page. And one of the things that drew me this year to the Fancy Pants collection altogether was the fact that it had these uh, these lace trims. I love using trims in, in my scrapbooking and, and especially in my October daily and my December daily projects. So for these ones, I wanted to use one of each of the different lace trims. There is one that is a pink scallop that has spiders in it. There's one that is a an orange, I don't think it's pumpkins, but it kind of looks like pumpkins. And then there's a third one that is a thicker, I think it's a two inch wide piece that is this lacy black. So I used one of each on the three different tags. And then in the middle of those lace pieces, I'm going to put a piece of ephemera, whether that is a chipboard, uh, a chipboard phrase or a 
uh, just a die cut phrase. So I have a couple different ones here. And then I did ultimately decide to cut two pieces of the orange trim so I could bulk it up a little bit more on the actual tag. So now I'm going to work on assembling this. I'm adding a little bit of adhesive to the die cut so I can put that down on top of the lace and then a little bit more on the backside of the lace so I can put that down on the tag. But then ultimately I'm going to take these and I will stitch down the lace and the ephemera pieces on those tags as well. So I'm not actually going to adhere the front side to the back side of the tag until after I get my stitching done so that I don't end up messing up the back side where I've got my text and my photos. So you'll see how that comes together here in just a little bit. For this last one, um, most of the pieces we've already mentioned the different collections where they came from. I've got the chipboard piece there that's from the Coco Daisy collection. I had the, um, I think it said too cute to spook piece, die cut, tiny phrase. Uh, that was from the A Little Scary collection. And then the last one that I did is actually from an Allie Edwards add-on that I got from last year. I believe it was from the October Stories by the Month, but then you could add on a die cut set that was Halloween specific. So I did go ahead and grab those, and then I have that in amongst all of my Halloween supplies this year as well. For my title piece, I originally was thinking about putting some puffy stickers on there. And I have some puffy stickers from Coco Daisy that I like the font of them. However, they are black. And since a lot of the tags and the patterns that are going into this pocket are also black, I was concerned that you wouldn't be able to see or read the title. So then I thought about doing white, but it turns out I actually don't have very many white alphabet stickers. And then that brought me to the idea of using my Heidi Swap alphabet stamp that I purchased this year with the Halloween release to stamp out my title with orange ink. I used the pumpkin spice, I think is what it's called, from scrapbook.com. It is a hybrid a hybrid ink, which means it's a hybrid between, I believe, a pigment and a dye ink. Uh, it's really quite beautiful. So I used that ink to stamp out the word best dressed. And then I did go ahead and lightly adhere that down onto the pocket. Underneath that, I'm going to put this die cut piece that says simply spooktacular which seemed pretty fitting for talking about costumes and best dressed. And then I just need to figure out where to put the number two to signify that this is story number two. I debated putting it below the Simply Spooktacular. I'm going to hold off on that and go ahead and attach everything first and then figure that out once I have the other pieces constructed. So we will go ahead and, and commit to this, stick this one down, and then I'm going to pull over my sewing machine and get to work stitching everything together. First, I'm going to stitch on the, uh, what I am losing it, I'm losing the name, the lace. <laughs> I'm going to stitch on the lace and those die cuts on the pockets. And then I'm also going to stitch down my title and put a little bit through the different die cut pieces as well, just to make it feel a little bit more whimsical. That's really what I was going for or messy. I'm not very good at messy stitching because I have a lot of experience in clothing construction and sewing clothes and costumes and those types of things. And those you're, you have to be a lot more precise. So for me, it's really hard to break out of the precision and um, you know, go ahead and, and let myself go and be messy. So I'm not very good at that right now. <laughs> Maybe I never will be, but I do my best. So I did go ahead and stitch all of that down first. And then once I had my title completed, then I went ahead, pulled over the background, the background paper there, and I'm going to stitch the entire pocket onto the paper. I stitched it a little bit closer inside so the stitching does not go all the way to the edge. I did that purposefully, number one, because I didn't want to disrupt the really cool spider dotted line around the outside of the pocket. And then also I will be hole punching the side of this and I didn't want to accidentally hole punch 
through my stitching and then ruin the pocket. So I did make sure to give myself a good amount of space in between the edges and the bottom for that pocket. So there's, you can see it pretty much completed there. Next, what I'm going to do is trim off the excess lace bits. I'm still debating how I want to put the number two on there. And then one of my patrons, Etienne, suggested that I actually put the number as a charm or one of the little Tim Holtz tokens, which you'll see me pull out here in just a second, and put that directly onto one of the tags. The original thought was to have it hang down. Um, but I really struggled with getting it to look nice. So you'll see what I end up doing instead here towards the end of this video. Now I'm going to adhere my front side of the pockets to the back side of the pockets. I'm, I'm going to make sure that everything matches edgewise here. And then we can go ahead and add my twine into the top of the tags as well. I'm pulling back over that black and white twine from earlier and I gave myself a healthy amount here. I originally went through and just had, you know, the, the two strings and then decide that I actually want this to be a bit bulkier. So what I'm going to do is fold my string into uh, quarters and then I will stick half of it through and use that so that when I trim off the excess, it's as though I have two pieces of twine wrapped around that hole. I like how it feels a little bit bulkier. I like, you know, that the, that the texture is there, that the dimension is there. It just feels a little bit more substantial and that feels pretty good. So here's where I struggled with the Tim Holtz token. What I decided to do instead was to just put a piece of string through the hole, tie it into a bow, and then I'm going to stick the token directly onto the orange and black tag there right in the middle of it using score tape. So it's not going to dangle or move, it's going to stay stationary on the tag, but I do really like the way that it looks there. I made my bow nice and small, and then I'm just going to trim off the excess of the twine. Now that that's done, we'll go ahead and adhere story two to story three, so they are back to back inside of the album, and then that's going to complete my project. Thank you guys so much for coming and watching this video today. I hope you enjoyed seeing how everything came together. Don't forget to like this video and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll see you back here in a couple of days with the next few spreads inside of this album.